Um, my name is Dana Snyder, and um, I'm just coming off of vacation, landed back from the Dominican Republic last night. So I am super excited to be back, a little hoarse voice, so bear with me. Hopefully it sounds super clear. So I'm excited to chat with you today about social media and data, two of my favorite things. And today, what I'm going to really talk to you about um, is how you can reach your goals over and over and over again with social media. I think sometimes there's this disconnect between our business goals in our organizations and our nonprofits and our social media metrics and our goals and how to align the two. So I'm really gonna break down how to do that today through five simple steps. So I see um, Marcy, I'm seeing Veronica, Susan. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm here, I'm seeing a couple people that can't hear. Can you drop me a Y in the questions box if you can hear and an N for no? Just wanna make sure I'm coming through. Okay, I got lots of Ys. Okay, cool. I think for those of you that can't hear, I would play with the log or dialing in via your phone instead of using the computer. That may be the difficulty. All right, so let's go ahead and get started because I wanna make sure that I allow enough time for questions at the end. Um, you obviously showed up here today with something specific that you wanted to learn. Everyone's dealing with unique things in their organizations. And so I really wanna lend time to almost act like a mini consulting session that we can chat through some things that you're working on specifically at your organization. So first and foremost, no distractions. You are here for a reason right now, all 165 of you as the ticker keeps going up. So make sure to turn off your cell phone if you have it nearby. Um, close the door. I do have a sleeping puppy underneath me, <laughs> but if you can remove any distractions around you um, to get the most out of this session, that would be amazing. And I want to kind of start off with um, the big elephant in the room when it comes to social media. I know sometimes it can feel, feel overwhelming and daunting. I've definitely been in that place before where I've been staring at my computer and I don't know what to post or I don't know what to do when I hear crickets because there's no engagement. What did I do wrong? Let me know in the questions box if you can relate to this. Nothing ever works on social media. It takes forever to come up with content. Dana, yes, I see you. Tamma goes all caps, yes. Okay, you guys got my back, all right. But here's the thing, and this is what's exciting. When you can understand your digital data, it is one of the most powerful and strategic ways to attract new donors and reach any goals that you have set. So this is what we're diving into today. I wanna show you what can happen when you do have a clear direction with your data and you really understand social media. So what we're gonna talk about today, I've implemented in my own business, um, and this is what's happened. So a 484% increase in website traffic year over year, 138% growth in a social media follower increase, 221% increase in impressions, and 118% increase in engagement. This is all possible when you understand where you're starting from and what your goals are for each of these. So when you're implementing the right strategies, this is all possible. And these are just some results from data audits that I've done with clients in the past that have kind of been like aha moments when they've understood and really broken down their data. They understood that social media brought in over a third of their website traffic and specifically which channels, so therefore they knew what to focus on. The second one's really interesting. Um, they were a predominantly female organization. Um, they were in human trafficking, working with female survivors. And so their top performing posts, ironically, featured men. But what's interesting about this is it was men supporting women in this cause. And so in the past, they had always worked with um, women influencers in digital marketing, and they realized, wow, we should really be working with some more men in this space to raise awareness about this topic. So that was super powerful for them. The third one, um, and this can be common in a lot of organizations. Let me know in the chat, give me a why if you have um, a digital or if you have a social media manager, like somebody specific to managing your social media strategy or give me an N if no. Okay, Emily, Boost, Molly, you all, Tatiana, yes, yes, yes. Tammy says no. Okay, mixed bag. Julia says I am the social media manager. That's what's up, I love it. 
No with Claudia, I see you. No with the frown face. Okay, so this is a big part of this. The digital findings can often be so powerful in your organization that in my case, I did this report and then the CEO asked me to write up a job description for a full-time senior level digital role so that she could go to the board because she realized, oh my gosh, we need someone right now to be working on this for us because it's already so powerful. We need to take it up a notch. Um, and then another one, super interesting. I was working with the Los Angeles Holocaust Museum and we realized through data that an entirely different generation was talking about the Holocaust and their cause, and it's helped to transform their programming. It helped to transform the cost of their tickets to their gala. Like so many things came about because of digital marketing. Adrian, I see you on um, all things. I love it. Lori says sort of. So I would look through, it's a mixed bag in here. Yes, social is with all digital. Yes, awesome. Alice, it's me. Cool, amazing. So you know the power that can come from data and understanding it. So you wanna make sure that you invest and you have, this is a good case when you start looking at data to be able to invest in the right people to progress your mission online. So I wanna know what's got you here today. Three reasons, all right? So reason number one, are you excited about creating a social media strategy that can generate constant donations? Reason number two, you're ready to set up a proper content creation system that helps achieve your organization's goals. So basically you're really tired of randomly posting social media content and hoping that it does something, you wanna see actual results. Or reason number three, you have goals assigned to you that you need to achieve, but you're not sure how to reach them with social media. So you know it can be powerful, but you're not sure how to use it properly. So which one resonates with you? Put A, B, or C in the chat. Oh, I've got lots of threes so far, two threes. Two, Renee's like two, 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 two. Two and three. Okay, lots of Bs. Okay, we are all across the board. I love it, awesome. So what I wanna get across for you is whatever your motivation, and this is what I try and do in my job, is I got your back. I'm here to make it happen. I'm here to make you look like a rock star. Um, and we're gonna bring in some new strategies that you can use literally right now. As soon as we get off this presentation, you can start to work on it. So if you're like, how do you know this stuff? Why are we here talking to us? This photo <laughs> um, is back from when, let me see, there we go, it flipped over. I produced a flash mob in 2011 when they were still a thing. Um, when I worked at my first job, which was in a nonprofit in Sarasota, Florida. Any shout outs, anybody here in Florida? Um, and I produced a flash mob for our nonprofit, which was so much work <laughs> to partner with a dance company. The guy in the front was a professional choreographer. We had to get the small group of people at UCB, we had to get them together to practice. I had to do a YouTube video so they could practice at home. And we did it um, at this big outdoor concert series that was every summer in Sarasota. And so I did this at the time to raise brand awareness for the organization to hopefully gain mentors and donors for our nonprofit. What's funny looking back is I was, I was growing up essentially as Facebook and social media channels were starting. So I was running ads and I was using Facebook literally right as Facebook launched all of their new products. So I had kind of naturally innately learned the tools along the way. So what I wish I knew back then and what was available now, I wish I could implement back in the day when I was doing flash mobs. <laughs> Fast forward, I started my own business, Positive Equation, working with nonprofits just like yourself. Um, to take my learnings, I transitioned and worked in New York City in the for-profit space, leading big campaigns for Sports Illustrated and The Honest Company, the USO, um, and many others. And I wanted to take my learnings in the digital marketing space and the tools I had and um, provide trainings and tech and knowledge like this to the nonprofit industry. So in 2017, I did just that. I moved to Los Angeles 
And I ended up getting this crazy experience um, working on American Idol as a digital producer, working with Katy Perry and these two lovely fellas. If you're a music fan, this is Luke Bryan and Lionel Richie. And so got to work with them for about nine months. And this was, I was on Lane Hardy season, if anybody watched this show. Yes, super fun, Julia. Um, and then just a little bit personal about me. Last year, my husband and I, Daniel and I, pulled off a COVID-free wedding in South Carolina. Um, so wishing health um, to everybody here on the phone call today. And then with my company, Positive Equation, I have had the opportunity to work with incredible organizations that you see here on the screen and many, many others. Um, and I'm really excited to share some of the teachings with you here today. So this is kind of our agenda and what we're gonna go through today. Um, I am going to share a worksheet with you at the end that you can download and use that will go through the five steps that I just discussed. Um, and that's the first part of the presentation, um, which is how to outline a social media plan that directly aligns with your organization's goals. So you're crystal clear on that. Number two, this is a question I get asked all the time. So we're gonna go through how do you create social media content in 20 minutes for two, two three weeks at a time? I have a content cheat sheet this is gonna be one that you're definitely gonna to wanna to screenshot, which is I believe in platform specific content to get the most engagement. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So you wanna take a screenshot of that. And then I'm gonna list my favorite tools. So favorite tools for creating videos, editing photos, analytics, um, the whole shebang, going live, everything like that. I will share my tools with you. And this is definitely recorded. And yes, I will definitely share a copy, Abby, I see your question. I'll share a copy of the deck with you. But just in case you want quick photos while we're going along, we'll dive into that. So, all right, everybody grab a, oh, thank you. Everyone was saying congrats for getting what married. Thank you. Um, it was quite the year <laughs> to plan a wedding, but we did it. All right, does everybody have a pen or a piece of paper? Because this is the time where you're gonna want to start to get it out and take some notes. We're gonna go through five steps. So if you're like me and you like to be chronological, leave some space for each step. Awesome, I see check in check from Abby. We're going into step number one. Step number one, I want you to think about what are your organization's goals? Business goals, this can be every six months, this can be annual. So for instance, I wrote some examples here. This could be more brand awareness. You wanna increase your monthly donors find volunteers, you need registrations for an upcoming event that you have. So in the worksheet, you're gonna be able to do this, but think about it kind of right now. What are one to three of your goals of your organization and make them as quantitative as possible? So I list the example of 25 new monthly donors giving $25 minimum per month. That would be a business goal. And we could say that that is um, over three months maybe, or over six months. So think about for a second, what are your organization's goals? If you wanna drop a couple of them into the questions box and I can read them aloud to let other people get some ideas. Richard, thank you. Oh, you're getting married in October. Mine was in October too, October 9th. Yes, it is so much additional work planning a wedding in addition to working. You nailed it, especially during COVID. But we're here to make it happen, right? All right, Dana, 50 new members per year. Okay, great, very tangible. Julia says increasing engagement with our members. So Julia, I would add a little bit, can you be more specific when you're writing it down? Like what does engagement mean? Because ideally what we wanna do be, to be able to prove success in this method is you wanna have a specific number. So whether that's, um, engagement could be social engagement, it could be increasing, but from an organization side, um, people showing up to things, um, you wanna be more specific. Claudia, 75 new donors per year, perfect. Amy, I'm gonna talk about good measurable, yep, yeah, for gaining brand, awa gaining brand awareness. So in your case, you might wanna say, um, you want to grow your website traffic that's brand awareness. You want to grow your website traffic 50% month over month. That would be a great organization goal for brand awareness. Patricia raised 500K in six months to support our work. 
Awesome. Perfect. Robin, I see the chat feature. So unfortunately, everyone can't see each other. We're using the questions box at the bottom and then I'm just reading them aloud because they all come through to me. Great. Veronica, engage with donors who haven't donated in the past five years. Awesome. If you could, could engage with how many donors, X amount of donors who haven't donated. Perfect. This is great. Yes. And to everybody asking, this will definitely be recorded. Okay, great. This is perfect. Increase followers on Instagram. So Alice, I would say increase how many followers on Instagram? Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Increase followers on Instagram to access the swipe up feature. I have a trick for you. I'm going to write that down at the end. Um, that you don't have to have 10,000. You need 10,000 followers to access the organic swipe up feature. I'm going to teach you a trick. Alice at the end. IG swipe up. I'm making a note. Okay. All right. So that's step number one. So everyone has a pretty good standpoint on that. Number two, once you have your business or the organization goals, we need to translate that into social media goals. I have a nifty map I'm going to show you in a second here. That's a cheat sheet for this. But for example, your business goal could be you want to increase your brand awareness by X. Okay. So this could be your website traffic by 50%. Your social media goal is that you want to increase your impressions and your reach to a certain number at that certain percentage. So brand awareness equals impressions and reach as your metric. Another example, business goal to increase your online donations and the social media goal would be you want to drive Y amount of link clicks to your website for X number of conversions, okay? So I'm gonna show you the cheat sheet because it might make more sense. All right, this is literally one of my favorite things in the world and there's a lot of text on here, so follow me. On the left-hand side, on the left column, it says donor's journey. And we're taking somebody from awareness all the way through to being an advocate for your organization. As you go along the right-hand side, you'll notice under awareness to the right, the objective, right, is to create awareness. Social media strategy is exposing your target audience to your content. The social activity, what you should be doing, are posting, right? If you're going to do paid, that means that you are doing ads um, or some boosted posts. But I recommend ads versus boosted. But your social KPIs, your key performing indicators, the numbers that you care about with awareness are impressions and reach. And the business impact of this is your overall share of voice or being top of mind. This is key. So in the for-profit world, um, actually you can think about it in the nonprofit world too, but really when you think about, when I say detergent, what's the first detergent that comes to your mind? Just think of Tide. Right, that's Tide comes to my mind. Yep, Jenny literally just said Tide. Exactly. Okay, so Tide has share of voice and top of mind awareness. This is what you want within your cause area. Okay, so when we think about, if somebody thinks about, oh, I really want to donate to a cause dedicated to homelessness, you want to be the first thing they think about. And that's why the awareness phase, getting more brand awareness, is what a lot of organizations pay for in advertising to be able to be top of mind. Okay, and then we break it down. Consideration. This is your generating demand. You are, in this case, you're educating your audience on what you do, on the impact that you provide. So here, your social KPI is number of engagements. The business impact here is the visitors and traffic to your website, okay? The main one, that a lot of us want that you're talking about is donations. So here we're in the decision phase. We want to drive conversions to do something. So here, the social number that you should be worried about is your link clicks. How many clicks do you get on your social posts that are driving people to your website? And then once they get to their website, how many people are converting to donate? Once they hit that, click that button, go to that page and so on and so forth. Okay, 
Um, Jackie's asking, why do I advocate for ads over boosted posts? Okay, I will ads versus boosted. I'll bring this up at the at the end. Jackie, I got you. Okay, so going back really quickly, step number two is we want to be writing your social media goal. So based on what you just wrote up above about your business goal, now looking at the map under your social KPIs, what would be the social media metric that matters to you based on where you are? From brand awareness um, to making a donation happen all the way down. KPIs, Dana, are key performing indicators. So these are what you want to be able to put next to. I'm going to put this one back up again. These are what you want to write. So you notice here in this, in the first one, my business goal as an organization, we want to increase our brand awareness by 50%, right? So if you're the person working on social media and your boss says that, the CEO says that, the board of directors, then you're going to say, great, I understand brand awareness means that I, as my job, mean to increase our impressions and our reach every month. And then I can go back and say, yes, we have increased our brand awareness. Now, going to the second one, to increase donations or signups or whatnot, you can put in whatever goal there, you want more link clicks. So you'll be able to look at your social data and say, okay, we want X amount of donations. I know, I'm gonna talk about this in the next step, our average conversion percentage on our website. So I know I need to have a certain number of link, link clicks to be able to reach that, to increase our goal by a certain amount. All right. Um, to increase volunteers. So you would want to be able to, um, if they're going to your website, it would be the second one. So you wanna drive link clicks on certain pieces of content around volunteering. Yeah, we have a couple of volunteers. So Emily said, we need to recruit volunteers. So my social goal is to increase clicks to the volunteer webpage from post by 20% each month. Nailed it. Emily, that's perfect. Gold, you got it. Lulu asked, how do you decide which area to focus on? For example, if your organization could use improvement in these metrics across the board. So I would say it's a priority um, where, wherever you see the priority. Um, if you are trying to generate more people, to come in, you want you always want to start at brand awareness because people need to be aware, right? They need to know that you exist in order to get them through the rest of the steps. Once they're aware, then they can see content that brings them into consideration. Ooh, I like what they're doing. I might give. And then after consideration, they see your content again. Now you're driving them to a site with a link click in your post, right? And they're like, oh yes, I do want to donate. So I always like to recommend that you start on this left-hand side, the donor's journey, start with awareness. Once you have a good bunch of people in that awareness phase, then you can bring them down the funnel, right? All right, so we're gonna keep going on. And I did see one question, Jenny, social UGC is user-generated content. So I will note one thing before I move on to step three. Advocacy, where it says the objective is to inspire evangelism, this is when people are so excited about what you do that they're sharing it with their friends. They're taking selfies and they're talking about their volunteer experience with you. They are going to your events and they are recording what they're doing. Um, they made a donation and they're sharing it with their friends and family. So it's when people are creating content for you. And ideally you wanna respond to those as much as possible to show them the love. You want to share them on your channels because that's the power of peer-to-peer. -peer. That's why if you do Facebook fundraisers, that's why those have raised billions of dollars um, because people see what other people have done. Cool, Dana, I'm gonna talk about link clicks. I got you. All right, so step number three is Google Analytics. And I'm gonna show you mine in just a second. So Google Analytics um, are super powerful. Um, in the questions box, let me know, do you currently track your Google Analytics stats? Why or no? Yes, I see some yes. 
Dana says no. Yes, every three months. Okay, cool. And Nancy says no. All right. Mary, yes, but only the basics. Cool. There's only certain ones that you need to know. No, not often. All right. We're going to go through this. So most of your goals, because we're living in the digital world, right? Especially after last year, we should all have beautifully designed, simple websites for people to go to. Um, most of our goals are tied to our websites in some way. So we really need to know what's going on there. So here I've broken down some metrics that you should pull. When we get off of this call, pull up. It's free to have a Google Analytics account. I would love to know your year over year traffic. I'm going to pull mine up and show you in a second. So you can go up last year, 2020 year to date. So far this year, 2021 year to date. Then we want to know how did they get there? And specifically because we're talking about social media, what were the top three social media channels that people use to get to your website? How are they finding you? And then we want to know what are your top five page views? This is super important because if you are running any type of advertising to your site, you want to make sure that they have a Facebook pixel. Facebook pixels is a line of code that Facebook gives you to be able to track activity on your website. Um, your top five pages are important to know because is there a donate button on that page? Is there a call to action to do something on that page? Is it mobile friendly? Um, so it allows you to ask a bunch of other questions. So let me go ahead and open up my Google Analytics page. And it might take a second to switch over. Okay, there we go. I see it on my side. Can you drop me a Y if you can see, you should see um, back into my analytics. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool, great. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna move over my GoToWebinar little panel here. And this is for my website. On the left-hand side, I'm gonna open up Acquisition and I'm gonna click Overview. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna change the date up on the right-hand side because I was talking about year over year. So let's talk about how to do that. I'm going to change my date range to the beginning of this year. So I wanna go back to January 1st to today. And I'm gonna check off compared to, and instead of previous period, I'm gonna click previous year. So now I'm comparing Jan 1 of this year and last year to August 23rd and hit apply. And it's gonna populate some data for me. So now as I scroll down, I'm able to see in the blue here is 2021. So this year versus the orange was last year. So then I'm gonna scroll down and look at some numbers here. So this allows me to see um, from this year, I am up a hundred and overall 106% on users. My organic search is way, way, way up. So hopefully that means my SEO is working. Direct, social, referrals to my site. I've done some paid search on Google. So it allows me to see overall, this would be looking at um, a little bit of brand awareness, but then a lot on engagement. Um, that I'm able to be found. And then I want to dive into specifically social. So I'm going to click on social. What are the channels that people are going to to find me? All right. So now I have versus Facebook. So I can look at comparatively year over year. 1500 versus last year was 960 at this point. Pinterest is number two. Pinterest is completely like an untapped space. Um, it's an amazing, it works like in a Google way where you're searching for specific things, right? And then you pop up. So Google, uh, sorry, Pinterest is my second. LinkedIn is the third way that people find me. Instagram fourth, YouTube fifth, and Instagram shorts. And these are very, very low, really outside of these top four, which is really interesting. So you want to look at how many users, how many new people are coming, how many sessions they're having, and what's the bounce rate? On which channels are they leaving the fastest? So Pinterest, actually, they're leaving the quickest. So this data tells me so much about where I should be spending my time 
where should we put in content. Um, so much information comes here into play. Then the last thing I want to show you is I want to go to behavior overview. And I want to look at my top five pages here. So this first one where it just has the dash is my home page. Um, the second one looks like it was a bot. So I don't even want to look at this one. I'm going to knock this out. So really, let's look at this one. Five virtual event platforms for nonprofits. So last year, I was teaching a lot about virtual events. So and this is all pre-populated into Google. I didn't set this up. This is all just the basic level. This is a blog post that I wrote. So this has so far had 2,600 views um, this year. So this blog post. Third is my masterclass that I teach on social media ads. Um, so that's the third most popular page. My fourth one is my mastermind. And these actually all have a thousand. And then these other two, these other three actually, these are all blog posts. So if I was trying to convert more people to a webinar or to one of my courses, I would wanna look at these blog posts and A, make sure they're updated, make sure they're relevant, make sure I have a call to action for them to do something here. Maybe I want them to join my email list and I wanna make sure that they look great on mobile and on desktop. I had a client recently that um, on their donation conversions, they were seeing a big drop off on mobile and it was because on mobile for some reason when they clicked the donate button it opened up an entirely new browser instead of just opening up the pop-up and people were leaving because of that extra click and so we were able to figure that out by looking at their google analytics all right so this i just wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes of how you find some of those quick metrics so now let's go back to the presentation And it might just take a second to switch back. There we go. Okay, great. So that's our Google Analytics. Number four. Number four, it's always great to have a good starting point to look back and see were we successful, right? Depending upon what your goals are. Um, so are we growing? Is our engagement increasing? Are we expanding our audience demographics the way we want to? So in this step, in step four, I would like you to fill out for each relevant channel for you, your growth percentage. So how much are you growing month over month? Engagement, what's your engagement rate? And what do your demographics look like? Now, to find this information, Sprout Social um, is one of my go-to social media management tools. They have incredible insights and analytics data. They do have a fee, but again, I they have a nonprofit um, rate as well. I highly recommend um, if you are going to make digital, which I please do, digital a priority in your organization, I recommend using a social media management platform tool. Um, I use Metricool now, and I'll share a link with you with that at the end when I talk about tools. Metricool, Metra, and then cool, all one word, is what I use. That's great as well. You can also use the native insights that are free to find this information provided um, on Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, they all have it. It just takes more time, right? To separately look them up and then do kind of a cross channel analysis. So I really recommend um, a tool to look at everything in one view. And a big tip here is I think sometimes we try and post on every single channel I recommend that's highlighted here in the square on the left hand side is to understand what's your primary and secondary social channel. So pick two, pick two to do really well and ask yourself to pick them to decide where is our audience or where should we be because our audience is already there. And part of that you can find out from looking at Google Analytics, right? So I can see, okay, Facebook. I do run Facebook ads, so that's a big reason why people are going there. So Facebook, LinkedIn was very high for me, Pinterest was up there, but I would say really um, LinkedIn is my top and Instagram is really my second. If I didn't have Facebook ads, I don't think Facebook would be so high for me. So you have to look at the data within context. 
So you want to outline all of these metrics depending upon what channels you're on. And then number five, step number five, is all in one place, you need to draft your business goal. Okay, so you're gonna put your business goal, translate it into that social media goal, and then you're gonna write the current number that you're at and then what your goal number is. So I put an example here at the bottom. My business goal, could be to increase our organization's visibility, brand awareness by 50%. Social media goal. To do that, we need to increase our impressions and reach month over month, MOM, month over month by 50%. Current number of impressions, 317,000 monthly. Goal, 475,500. That's a 50% increase. So these four things to write down are incredible for clarity. Um, it gives you vision on what you need to be doing tactically from a post standpoint. It allows you proof to show to a board of directors or to a boss to say, this is where we're at. It also gives you ammo to say, I need X to help me accomplish this, right? Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna jump into questions real quick here. Um, uh, Aaron. Does, or is it Karen? Karen. Does Sprout have a free evaluation period? Yes, they do. I think they have like a 14 free day trial or something. They're amazing. And yes, I will definitely share these slides. Um, Tammy, I think I need a whole course, whole course on Google Analytics. Yes. There's a lot there, but honestly, if you use the guide in the worksheet um, and just go to that acquisition and that behavior tab I showed you, you can find out so much information from just those two tabs. Okay, awesome. All right, so we've gone through the five steps. So take a deep breath and now tell me, what would you be able to do if your social channels became a constant source for donations? I promise you with everyone I've worked with, data can help you uncover strategies for dollars um, to really help your organizations grow. So deep breath and just like picture that. Your social channels are not just posting random content every single day, but they are, a, they are a constant source for donations. So to do that, you are here in this training, which is amazing, you've made the time, but you want to be able to make sure that you get the tools and more trainings to be able um, to make these goals happen. All right, so now let's transition to talk about content. All right, if you are in your note-taking section, we're gonna talk about how do you create social media content in 20 minutes? All right, I have a magical thing um, that's called a grid. I was part of um, Jasmine Starr's social media curity program, and I loved this takeaway from another student. So I'm sharing it with you. It's been a game changer for my business and clients I've worked with. What you wanna do, you can just on a whiteboard, you can just on a piece of paper, create a grid with at least six rows and six columns, okay? The X axis on the top is where you're gonna write caption themes. This is your copy for your posts, what you're gonna write, what it's about, okay? On the Y axis, you're going to write your photo themes. So the media that might be relevant to your organization. This is an example of what mine looks like. Um, so at any given time during my content planning strategy, I can pull this up and let's just say um, my first caption theme says about Dana. So in a post, I'm going to talk about me. I'm gonna talk about my background. The photo, the image, the video could be showcasing my family. It could be showcasing a photo of Atlanta, because that's where I live. It could be a picture of me, the business owner. It could be a motivational quote. This literally allows me creative brainstorming and it focuses me into what my post should be. And then what I'll do is I'll run through these and then I'll start to repeat, right? So I could literally talk about myself six with six different pieces of content, right? In different ways. So 
An example in um, the nonprofit space might be this. I, I made up an organization about Labradoodles because I have a mini Labradoodle. Um, so you want to think about how could this look for you? So for instance, here, if I go across the top, again, this is our caption, what we're writing about. On the left-hand side, these are um, visuals. So, oh, sorry, I think I actually did this background. I did this backwards for them. I apologize. These should be flipped. So the photo would be of a Labradoodle puppy, and I would be talking about our why. It could be a photo or a video of behind the scenes of our facility, and I'm telling impact stats. Right? Does that make sense? You kind of take your finger and you can marry the two up across the board. So really, the 20 minutes or so that you spend is on creating your five, six different grid options of your captions and of your media. Um, BTS, Patricia, is behind the scenes. So behind the scenes of your facility. Um, will I be sending the grid spreadsheet in the templates? So I don't have that in the worksheet, but you can definitely um, take a screenshot of this or you'll have the deck that you can reference. So this was a game changer when it came to me for content planning. All right. Moving on, was this helpful? Give me a Y in the chat, an exclamation mark. Lulu, where would videos fall into this grid? So your, I'm um, gonna go back to mine because it's actually in the right columns. I apologize, you need to flip them. Um, videos could be anything in here. It could be a video about me. It could be a video client testimonial. It could be, um, a video of me and my family, a video of Atlanta, or it could be a photo. Essentially, I put photo theme, but it can really be any type of media, anything along the lines. Yes, okay, good. Yes, this is so helpful, amazing. Good, 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 good. Susan, BTS is behind the scenes. So a great example um, of behind the scenes, it was just super silly, but people love raw content like this. I was doing a webinar back home at my parents' house in Sarasota, and I had the most ridiculous setup, you, everyone. I was, um, my computer was like on a tiny nightstand with a tissue box to get it at the right level, and my, it was just a mess. It was, and I was sitting like right behind my door, and it looked silly. So I took a BTS behind the scenes photo of my setup, and I was like, you can make webinars, you can make everything happen. Um, no matter what your circumstances are. And everyone loved that post. And that was literally a simple photo of me showing BTS. Um, so that's an example of that. Um, Stephanie, what is inspo? Uh, that's my abbreviation for inspiration. <laughs> so if I wanted to talk about something inspiring, that would be my caption. Great question. All right, so now we're gonna talk about my favorite thing, which is a cheat sheet. Something that is largely missed when it comes to social media is understanding that every single social media platform works differently. Platform specific content. Even if there's one thing you take away from this webinar today, put a big asterisk, a big star here, platform specific content. The way that we use, when you think about your personal use, if you use Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, we use them differently. Facebook and Instagram, we might be scrolling a lot. YouTube, most of the time, we are searching for how to install blank, how to fix blank, right? We are searching for something. Um, even how we, the things we want to view on Instagram and search for, we might buy things there. We might not buy things on Facebook, we might just share photos of our friends and our family. Um, the things listed on the screen right now are what work the best on each platform. So Facebook loves live video, live streaming as much as possible. They love just plain video content that you upload to their platform. Never, never, never share a YouTube link on Facebook because they're competitors, okay? Facebook wants, owned video content there. They also are amazing when you link out to blogs. Facebook is an amazing driver of website traffic. Okay, so those are the main three types of content you should be posting on Facebook. Instagram, 
Instagram, the head of content for Instagram came out just a month ago and said that they are no longer a photo sharing app. That does not mean that you cannot post photos on Instagram. It just means from a business standpoint, they said that um, YouTube and TikTok are their two biggest competitors. So therefore, what does that mean? It means they want more video content. So Reels, they have put so much emphasis on Reels. Um, I will post a Reel sometimes. I only have, I don't know, just over a thousand followers. I don't have a lot of followers on, on Instagram, but my Reels can have 2000 views in like 30 minutes. They are pushing them hard. Video, IGTV, and stories are great for Instagram. Twitter, Twitter to me is honestly one of the hardest platforms to see big engagement if you are not consistently active on it. So that's again, when I talked about having a primary and a secondary channel, um, if you're not seeing great success on Twitter, then don't be there. If you're not constantly adding to the conversation, um, it can be great if you're attending a lot of events and there's like a hashtag and you're meeting up with people, but Twitter, um, primarily great for retweets and again, driving website traffic, linking out to blogs. LinkedIn loves articles, video content. Polls are really popular on LinkedIn and uploading PDFs to LinkedIn posts. So if you wanna share your annual report, if you have an infographic about something you're doing, upload them, amazing for LinkedIn. And then on YouTube, you really wanna focus on YouTube is more like Google. I mean, it's owned by Google. So it's, it's very searchable. So you wanna make sure your titles of your content are what would be top of mind, what would somebody think about searching for, and that's what you want your title to be. And then your thumbnails, the visual thumbnail of the video should be presented um, in a beautiful way. And you can use, somebody mentioned it earlier, Canva. Um, amazing tool to design beautiful thumbnails. Stephanie, retweet, um, RT is retweet. And Tammy, yeah, Twitter practically demands five plus posts per day. Yeah, it's really difficult, agreed. Um, and then Aaron, yes, what is a reel? So a reel, is a now it goes up to 60 second quick video basically it's a bunch of short videos that you put together to tell a story they are super popular i would recommend going on to instagram and there is a real icon now that's taken over when you open instagram it is i don't know if you can see me on mine it's the middle like little play button i have a bunch of them if you go to um if you go to my Instagram account, which is positive equation with one E, which I'll show you here in a second, um, you'll see a bunch of reels. It's quick, quick videos with text that you put on top and they are super popular right now. All right, we're almost at the end and I'll get to some more questions. So my favorite tools, again, you're going to get this deck, so don't feel like you have to rush them down. Um, number one, Canva. I saw some people earlier said, love, love, love Canva. Um, Amy, your YouTube thumbnails are the image that goes onto your YouTube video when it's uploaded. So it makes it look pretty. Again, a great example, if you go to my Positive Equation YouTube, you'll see I have thumbnails on everything. Um, Canva is where I create all of mine. You can also do video editing in Canva. Linktree and solo.to. This is for your Instagram link in bio. This allows you to have multiple links Again, you can see this, I have solo.to on mine. If you click my link in bio, you don't go to one page. You have the option of clicking through multiple tabs. Um, Unsplash in Pexels. If you struggle with beautiful, finding beautiful free photography or video, videography, they are both incredible. Yes, I love this. <laughs> love Canvas, so easy. Amazing. Um, Bitly. Bitly is great for shortening your links. So when you go to share something on Facebook and you want to shorten it and not have it be such a long link, Bitly is totally free. You can shorten and customize your link. Adobe Spark is great for video editing. Same thing with Veed.io if you want to create simple videos. Stephanie says Linktree has been fantastic. Love it. Yes, Julia, Canva video editing is so great. Love it. Oh, Catherine, how to produce a reel when no one wants to be on camera. So you don't have to be the one on camera. You can take it of other things, but 
you definitely should have a key stakeholder that goes on camera. People want to see a face, they relate with people. So that's something that I would say to work on and work through. And once you do it one time, it gets so much easier. It gets so much easier, promise. All right, so those five, and then for captions. So like eight plus, over 80% of videos on social are watched without audio. So there's literally an app called Captions. <laughs> and it allows you to record videos and have captions automatically added. This is also a new feature on Instagram now um, where captions can be automatically recorded onto your Instagram stories. Rev.com, R-E-V, allows you to um, upload a video and then I think it's a dollar per minute, it might've changed, but you can get transcription, transcriptions, captions, foreign subtitles, so if you need things in multiple languages, you can do that there. Um, Trello and ClickUp are my favorite tools for project management. So if you have a bigger team and you need to move things down the line, if you're working on an approval process, Trello and ClickUp are great. Um, Metricool, Metricool is what I use for social media publishing. I'll put the link in the chat for everyone. So that's the Metricool. Um, that's where I schedule all of my social content. Um, and track my analytics. But as I mentioned, Sprout Social is also amazing. I think they both have free periods where you can test them. And then StreamYard is my jam for live streaming. And I will share a link to that as well. So they are both in the chat. StreamYard, the magic behind it, I do a live um, interview show called The Edition live twice a month on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And StreamYard allows me to live stream simultaneously on Facebook, page, my Facebook group, YouTube, and LinkedIn all at the same time. You can also do Twitter, but I don't do Twitter. Um, so you're streaming to all of those places at the same time. So that's the magic of streaming. Aaron goes, whoa, mind blown. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Aaron says, um, Irene says, Canva, you can apply for a nonprofit account, which gives you full access. Yes. Which is incredible. Um, so I want to know, we're coming to the end. How are we feeling? Give me a one for option one. You're hyped. This is awesome. You feel so much more confident. You have some good direction. Option two, slightly overwhelmed, but you're excited. You need to rewatch the whole thing to break it on down. Option one, some option twos. Good, awesome, super helpful. Amazing. So if you are, whether you're option one or option two, I would love to invite you to my nonprofit Social Media Marketers Facebook group. I have 1,700 other organizations in there. All you do, take your phone. We're used to this um, QR code when we go to restaurants nowadays, right? Where take your phone, put your camera over the, the um, QR code, and it'll open up a link to Facebook to join the Facebook group. We share ideas in there. Um, people ask questions all the time, recommendations, if there's job postings, literally anything and everything, um, just to be really helpful. I share my... Um, my live interviews are in there, so you can watch any of those. Um, and it's just an amazing place for community. So if you're looking for community um, to find other people to chat with, to vent with, to celebrate with, this is a great place to do that. And then don't forget, I am going to share with you, Tammy goes 1.5. Yes, I love this. Um, your DIY social media audit worksheet. So I'm going to share this in the chat. I will also be sending this in email with the recording, but this link should open up a Google Drive account and it will provide you with the worksheet, um, with the question, the steps that we just went through with the so social metrics map to allow you to run through what we just did with your team. All right, so that is in the chat. Make sure you have that. I would love to connect with you. If you're looking for, I learn the best by looking for inspiration and ideas from other people's pages. So again, my main two primary and secondary are Instagram and LinkedIn. So on Instagram, it's positive equation with one E. On LinkedIn, Dana Snyder um, is my name. And so you can find me there. And then let's go ahead and dive into some Q&A. So as you get your questions ready, I have a free masterclass coming up tomorrow. I just randomly put this in last minute if it's helpful for everybody because Alice and Jackie and I think some other tech questions on ads. So tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, it will be recorded. 
I have a free masterclass on how to use Facebook and Instagram ads to attract recurring new donors. And I break down um, ads versus boosted um, big time. I go through the differences. And then Alice, IG swipe up. So you can run an Instagram ad that has the swipe up. So you don't even have to get 10,000 followers. You could start doing that right now. And I think one of the big myths and I talk about this, um, is that you have to spend a lot of money to run Facebook ads. That's not true. The minimum is actually a dollar a day. Obviously, you don't get a lot of reach for that, but you can start to run ads on a very low budget to reach your audience. So um, tomorrow, again, make sure your questions are populating. Tomorrow, the masterclass is going to touch on the three myths of social media ads and what actually works what you need to do, what steps need to happen before launching your ad campaigns to see success, and then what should your ads cost you and what to expect as a return on your investment. And then lastly, I was just on vacation and I've had ads running, so they're doing the work for me while I'm gone, how to automate your fundraising and your brand awareness. So put on that out of office message, go on vacation, let the ads do work for you, you come back to work, and there's more funds and more donors waiting for you, which is a beautiful thing when it comes to ads. So awesome. Um, can I link to the Facebook group? Yes. Let me do that. I see a lot of questions for that. All uh, right. This should be in the chat. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So let's get to some questions. We have a couple minutes left. Let's see. Um, Uh, Jen, do I have a class on Google ads? I don't, um, I am not a pro on Google ads. I would say my friend, um, Caroline for the grill is amazing. Um, let me put, I'll put her name. So Google ads and she does SEO. I know my skill sets and I know, I know what I'm good at and I'm not great at, but she's really good at it. So if you look, uh, I guess spelled it right. This is who you should go to. If you Google search her name, she should pop up. She's great. Um, Lisa, what about TikTok for engaging younger demographics? Yes. I mean, there's no doubt TikTok is still, I think, the fastest downloaded app in the app store. Um, that's why Instagram is saying it's one of their biggest competitors. So yes, Instagram reels are essentially what TikTok is. The TikTok's whole platform is Reels. Um, so yes, if you are looking to engage with a younger demographic, then you definitely want to make sure that you are on TikTok and Instagram and creating entertaining content. That's what those platforms are mainly used on. Lori, can an organization do any of this organically or is a social media ad budget a need? No, you can definitely do everything we talked about today organically. You do not need a social media ad budget at all. The difference though is social ads allow you to exponentially and efficiently grow quicker, um, great, get larger brand awareness, um, drive more people to conversions. So it just depends on, I would say you definitely do both. And you can have a very conservative ad budget to start if you want to, to do some testing. Because it takes testing. It's not going to be perfect um, at the beginning. Um, ooh, Catherine said, you can swipe up without 10K followers starting at the end of August via a sticker. Ooh, I have to check this out. I'm going to put this link for everyone. There we go. TechCrunch article. Yeah, and this is the thing. This is why. So the group, the Facebook group is amazing for this. Um, there's changes on social media every single day. So um, yeah, probably because they want engagement in their Instagram stories. That's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. Um, yes, Emily, this, oh, yet yeah, tomorrow's masterclass? Yes, will be recorded and you will receive a replay. Yep, absolutely. Um, Miri, let's see. Our board of directors is not social media savvy. I totally hear you. Been sharing metrics with them. Any tips to help them get it and understand why social media is so critical? I mean, there are a bazillion stats about why social media um, in digital marketing overall is important. 
I would say it's probably, if you can go to Google Analytics and show literally just how many people are coming to your website from social media and what you can do to increase that, um, ask the simple question of where do they go when they're looking to make a purchase decision or a restaurant decision or traveling somewhere um, or, or interacting with friends and family? I guarantee you they're probably using some sort of social media. I mean, my mom is almost 70 and she's on Facebook <laughs> all the time. My dad's on YouTube all the time. He's in his late 60s. So um, when people can think about their personal habits, their personal daily habits, and I probably most board of directors work at for-profit businesses and ask them, is there for-profit business on social media? Because I guarantee you they are, because everyone talks to people for customer service through social media. There is no reason the nonprofit space and the business space are no different except for tax code, right? You're building brand awareness. You're making conversions happen. You're starting a conversation. That, that's the proof, right? When they just look at, they have to remove kind of like this foggy lens that happens sometimes when I, when I think of the nonprofit space. You're so welcome. Um, let me see. Alex, about dialing up. Can you remind me what you're talking to? Um, yes, can I put a link to the workshop for tomorrow? Yes. Um, this is one for tomorrow on Facebook and Instagram ads. And then let's see. I'll keep going. I know we're just over time. I'll get, get to as many as I can here. Um, let's keep going. If you run one Instagram ad, do you get to keep the swipe up feature? It's just applicable to the ad you run. Yep, it's just on that one ad. You're so welcome. Um, let's see. Recently, Micah's had a huge drop on Instagram engagement, um, but haven't changed much in what we're doing lately. My guess is because we aren't posting video content. So I would go to your insights and I would look at what are your top performing posts and start to post content like that. But yes, Instagram is definitely focusing a lot on video content. The other thing that we didn't really talk about as much here today, but is engagement. You need to be actively engaging, especially on Instagram, to see results. So being in those direct messages, reaching out to people. Um, one of my cheats here is that find accounts that will probably have followers that are like your ideal donors and go to their accounts and spend like 15 minutes on this. It doesn't have to be a lot. And engage with them, like their posts, respond to their story, and then that way you're generating brand awareness. Um, let me see. Um, Richard, Richard on ads. Uh, da, 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 da. They stopped us from, oh, they're holding back your permission to do ads. Do I know how to contact Facebook to fix this? Yes. Go to my Instagram account and I have a video on how you can live chat with Facebook. So I will post, let me see if I can just share that exact post with you. He's saying Richard's having an issue being able to run ads. Uh, let me see if I can find it, here it is. Okay, this is the video. And actually this video is a reel. So this two for one. <laughs> there you go. All right, couple more. Um, Stephanie, video is incredibly time consuming to generate any tips for a tiny comms team. So it doesn't have to be though. What I recommend is bulk creating content, block off an afternoon, block off a morning and say, we're going to create these 10 videos. I mean, when you look at my account, look at my videos, they are quick. Um, and when you're using some of these tools that I mentioned here today, if you spend like half a day or even a day on just video content, and then you have a month a video content to use, it's so powerful. It's the best tool for storytelling. That's also why I like doing live content. I do lives twice a month minimum. Um, you can also go live on Instagram. And those don't, those don't require too much prep, right? And it's raw and it's real and then it lives on. Then you go live. Everyone that's a follower is receiving a push notification to your phone. 
So that's automatic engagement, getting them to open the app to tune in and watch. So there's kind of ways to get around it. Julia, have I used the nonprofit donate IG sticker? Yes, as a donor, yes. Um, and I would say Facebook fundraisers, in my experience, work much better. But when I was fundraising for a cause, you can sync a Facebook fundraiser. This is how in sync the two platforms are because they're owned by Facebook, or sorry, Instagram's owned by Facebook. When you launch a Facebook fundraiser, your Instagram account knows it, and you can marry the Instagram sticker to go towards that Facebook fundraiser. Fun fact. Um, yes, I have used it. You can also do the donate button on your actual profile as a nonprofit. Um, okay, let me see. One more. There's so many good questions. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Uh, do you use any special equipment for voice over audio in video? All right, so great question. I think everyone can see me. I use this microphone, which is a Blue Yeti, although mine is red, and this thing is amazing. Um, it's like $99, I think, on Amazon, Best Buy. now of course i turned my microphone off <laughs> as soon as i moved it um so but do you hear the difference so this is my computer audio so do you hear jillian i know i'm loling at myself okay so the difference between my mic audio versus the computer audio yes a little different so this is computer i wonder if i can fix it really quickly let's see and then you can see the difference Let's do a quick test. And then Heather's probably like, we gotta wrap this up, Dana. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, okay, can you tell the difference? I see some whys, less static, smoother with the mic. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it makes a big difference. Awesome. So. Um, I yes, I will send the recording to this. I promise to send the worksheet um, as well in there, and I will send the deck. And then I look forward to catching up with everyone on social, on the masterclass tomorrow, um, and in the Facebook group. So thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad it was amazing. Heather, is there anything we need to do to wrap? Or I'll hand it back over to you. No, yeah, I think you did. Did very well, and I think you know how to run the show pretty good, so we're all good here. Cool, awesome. Everyone Thanks, everyone. It was so nice seeing you. Be cool. sure to take her class tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. All right. Thank you, Dana. You got Thanks. it. Bye, Heather. Bye.